Hello and welcome to this Not Another Nutrition Podcast episode on, and I'm going to make it specific to, Monster Energy Ultra. It can be extrapolated outwards. I'm going to talk about these white monsters. I'm particularly fond of having a white monster in my hand at all times. And it's something I get messaged about a lot because they taste amazing, don't they? And the thing I want to be really clear on is lots of what I'm talking about does relate to zero calorie, zero zucker, zero calorien. I'm just, I don't know where I've got this from. Clearly gone budget somehow um, because I drink so many of them. Anyway, I'm not biased in that I'm saying this now. I'm not biased because I like them. I'm not trying to defend my consumption of them. I make choices often towards a healthful choice, not always. Uh, as a human. But in this instance, it is something that I've considered uh, a lot and I'm interested in. And I feel like uh, there's this term health halo. I'm not sure if you will have heard it, health halo. Certain things are given health halos, like um, if you write on something low fat, that was a health halo, or gluten free. And in my earlier, when I would do talks in corporate settings, like just, you know, arsenic's gluten-free, petrol is gluten-free. It doesn't make them good for you to consume them. And uh, white monsters or the, these kind of sugar-free energy drinks have got almost the opposite of a health halo, like a health horn. No, okay, that, <laughs> no, that, no, that does not sound like it should. I was thinking like devil horns, health horn. That sounds like getting turned on by watching someone eat quinoa, quinoa doesn't it? <laughs> not a health horn, a health, Anyway, we won't go there. The opposite. Essentially, it's been so demonized that that even myself, like if I, I will regularly drink one as my first drink of the day. The same way many, many people drink a cup of tea at the beginning of the day or a, a cup of coffee. I hate the taste of coffee. Please don't send me death threats now. I know that the, the coffee drinking cult is powerful and somehow it's part of your identity. I just don't like the taste. And don't give out to me, oh, come to Sydney, drink. Oh, you just not had the right coffee. No, no, all coffee tastes like and not the kind of ass that you want to eat, okay? It's not nice, I don't like it. Just leave it, don't try and convince me. Stop being an evangelist for the for big coffee. Anyway, White Monster Ultras, they uh, and other calorie-free, you, you know, you've also got other diet drinks that aren't high in caffeine, and, and caffeine is one thing I'm going to discuss briefly here. But people demonize, I put up on my story today, you know, what what things have you heard? Oh, they cause cancer, they're going to make you die in your sleep. Sarah sent me, my head of nutrition, this thing that someone had shared that was like, it takes 64 gallons of water to wash a single can of sugar-free Red Bull. That was actually Red Bull, that post. It's crazy. You know, this, this can that I'm holding here, 500 mil can, I think, yeah. It's 99% water. So for a start, it's, you know, it, this is one of the reasons I drink it, for the caffeine. And to, I'm terrible with my hydration, very, very bad. So it does actually help with my hydration. And sometimes I'll mix it with water and some sugar-free squash to, if I don't want as much caffeine. But people make up all these myths. And, and often it's people who aren't, necess- you know, you're drinking one of these and someone go, oh, I may, or, you know, a Callum or a Karen in your local vicinity, whilst they're smoking a cigarette or doing a line of crack. I don't know if you do lines of crack. I think you smoke crack, don't you? Either way, you know that, don't you know how bad that is for you? Like, cheers, pal. But people will pass comment with no real knowledge and well-meaning people will pass comment. And the one thing I've, I've written to a couple of notes here and one, one is just kids. And there, there is a big difference between children in classrooms who, who maybe are struggling to concentrate and maybe are struggling with behavioral issues, you know, hyperactivity, and they're downing one of these and p- please bear in mind, this is the sugar-free version. So I'm not discussing. And you know what? I do think it would be worth doing a whole episode on sugar-sweetened beverages because there is a lot of research in that area and they are really not good. And that's not from the perspective of they're not some people say sugar is toxic or addictive and, and these various different phrases, which I'm not a fan of. But the, you know, 
unabated, oh, that's a good word, unabated consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages by people who really, who perhaps don't understand what it is they're consuming and what it might be doing to their health long term. You know, I'm not talking about healthy individuals who make informed choices about having a, you know, a 7-Up or some lemonade or some Coca-Cola with, you know, the full sugar versions. I'm talking about people who just are thirsty and reach for these drinks and maybe already have health issues that would really, really benefit from not consuming those things. And and one of the things actually on this front is, the, and the reason I, I guess I'm doing this podcast, I want, I want to try and keep it quite short, I'm not good at that, but is because people are going, oh, you're better off just having the one with sugar in than all those hashtag chemicals. I saw a thing the other day. If if you don't recognize an ingredient, then your body won't. Hashtag inflammation. Like, oh my goodness. It just blows my mind that 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 was on a billboard outside a, a shot a photo of it and um so kids yes in this this in this instance the the you know drinking loads of sugary drinks probably not good but then the highly caffeinated versions like this so if it, it you know it's different if you're drinking a sugary lemonade but this version is going it's lots of caffeine. And, you know, there are potential impacts of that on behavior, potentially, in some individuals. Um, so there's a discussion there that, that I'm talking really in this episode about adults and that there's no need to be. And, and when I drink this, it's like, oh, am I unhealthy? You know, I feel unhealthy. I'm walking around. It's like I'm walking around drinking a tinny at 9 a.m. in the morning. A tinny. Is a good word. Whereas, you know, drinking a coffee, it's like, oh, look, I'm just having my morning espresso. Yes, darling, coffee. Yeah, oh, I'm so mature and cultured. <laughs> can you t- can you taste these beans? They're specially roasted. Anyway, so you feel a bit more cultured drinking a monster, uh, drinking a coffee, don't you? So the difference is 99% water, and the, people don't understand what's in them. Oh, the chemicals! Like all food is made up of various different chemicals. I cannot believe I've actually picked up one that is all in another language. Vasa, that's water. It must be an English version of the ingredients. There's really not citron sour. <laughs> Taurine, that would be taurine. There you go. Sarin regulator, that will be like a acidity regulator or something. Panax ginseng, there you go. That translates. Anyway, some vitamin, some B vitamins, glucuronolactone. Anyway, all these things, you take them all individually out and you go, what's wrong with this? What's the research on this? What's this ingredient? And there's nothing in there. Realistically, this is 99% water. It's got some caffeine in it, which we'll discuss. And it's got... Um, again, see see what sweeteners, see if I can see the translation. Sucralose, yeah, it does translate. Anyway, it doesn't say anything that I think here is aspartame, aspartame. Anyway, and it might be slightly different sweeteners in different countries actually thinking about that. That's funny. Anyway, the point is the main two things that people are going to take issue with are the caffeine content and the artificial sweeteners. Other than that, it's just a random, hateful, oh, chemicals like what chemicals can you know they'll happily drink sugar-free squash which has all of these very similar chem hashtag chemicals uh but minus the caffeine so and i'm i I do think i'm going to do a whole series on artificial sweeteners because i think there's a lot to dig into there it's a very interesting area an area i'm hugely interested in but and you know what i I will link you to to maybe a systematic review or meta-analysis that gives some overarching information on uh, these things. One person did say, you know, where does the stigma around these drinks come from? And you've got the initial stigma of the full sugar versions. Drinking those, there, there's, you know, lots of research on just drinking sugar syrup, essentially. And it's pr- probably not great for our health to be consuming large. It, no, I say probably, it's definitely not great for our health to be c- consuming huge amounts of sugar day in, day out. The data's fairly clear on that having some you take absolutely fine and there was actually another question i saw somewhere maybe in the listener questions document that said something like you know if there's no downsides why aren't all sugar sweetened beverages sorry these energy drinks the sugar-free version i think it's just a free market isn't it it's and originally they were they were just sugar and now taxes change what companies are making and difference in goals, like people being more interested in lower calorie versions and this, that and the other. So it's it's just a free market, isn't it? It's like when cigarettes were around, well, why aren't they all lights if we know that that's got less tar in it? <laughs> Is it tar? And they had the numbers on the side, nicotine and tar, something like that. Anyway, 
It's a bit old school, isn't it? So the issues. So the caffeine content is a big one, and it that it can have knock-on effects on your health, but only in the same way that coffee can. If people are consuming boatloads of anything with caffeine in it and it's impacting their sleep, that's, uh, and maybe I'll do a, a podcast on caffeine alone, but caffeine's half-life, like four to six hours-ish for half of the caffeine in something to clear from the system. Now, the amount of caffeine in one of these, I believe it's around 30 or 32 milligrams per 100 mils. I can't see it there. Again, it's not in English, but it is around that. So this can would have approximately 150 milligrams of caffeine. Now compare that to, that's a couple of coffees. You know, it's a whole almost pint of liquid I'm consuming with the amount of caffeine of two coffees. Now compare that to maybe a Costa Grande coffee, very strong coffee beans used. And I think on their website, it's like 240 milligrams. So far more caffeine in one of those than in this. Almost two of these to get one of those. Now, one thing I, I might link you to is like the general, there may be, it's maybe EFSA, European Food Standards Agency regulations. Uh, no, maybe it's not EFSA, but guidelines around healthful caffeine consumption. And I believe generally they're unfortunately this absolute figure. Absolute figures are annoying because you've got a 50 kilo guy or girl and a 100 kilo guy or girl being told to limit their consumption to the same amount. So for a 100 kilo guy, 400 milligrams, which is this absolute value, you know, don't, individuals probably for health reasons shouldn't consume more than 400 milligrams of caffeine, you know, it'll say something like that in these guidelines. But for that person, that's four milligrams per kilogram of their body weight. 400 divided by 100. Whereas for the 50 kilogram individual, that's double that, eight milligrams per kilogram. So it's tricky. Now in the research, in the sports science research, we know that anywhere between two and six milligrams per kilogram consumed all at once, give or take, is what we are looking for to get ergogenic effects, increases in reaction, improvements in reaction time, uh, increases in, in power, output, all of the cool effects, you know, increase in um, sprint ability, uh, uh, repeated sprint ability, all these different things that caffeine has these hugely beneficial effects on. And yes, I do think I will do a, you know, a caffeine episode would be cool, wouldn't it? I don't know why, maybe I've done something previously. Not sure. So how much is too much? You don't want it to be impacting your sleep. So if I'm having 150 milligrams in a can and four hours later, 75 milligrams of caffeine is still in my system, you start to work that back. If I'm having two of these, that's 150 four hours later. Uh, that's 75, hour, 75 milligrams eight hours later. So if I'm wanting to go to bed at whatever time, counting that back, you've still got a fair amount of caffeine in the system. And if it's impacting sleep, sleep's super important, worth bearing in mind. There are withdrawal effects. You know, someone said, I think in my question box, you know, are they addictive? Now there is, a down regulation of what's called your adenosine receptors with you know consuming loads and loads of caffeine and that and it's this habituation effect you need more to get the same effect is that damaging you is it bad for your health there's not a great deal to suggest that that would be the case if you have heart issues totally different ball game you know bear that in mind i can't anyone who has a rare genetic diseases this that and the other it's it's not generalized nutrition information can't be given for those those specific situations but other than that if you're comfortable with caffeine consumption through tea and coffee and whatever this, this isn't giving you anymore the artificial sweeteners again if you demonize artificial sweeteners it's funny because as i've said they're in lots of different things in in just squash uh, cordial whatever people call it diluting juice uh, you know you're welcome, Australians and Americans and whoever. And these will have artificial, but people are perfectly happy to consume them or protein bars or whatever, but yet somehow it's bad when it's in this shiny can and, and seems like it's a chemical. And the evidence just isn't there to support this these ill effects. But, but yeah, there's been s suggestions made that it's impacting gut health, which are really interesting and I'm interested in those, but seemingly human trials don't seem to be supporting that. Uh, but it might be, and uh, you know, I'm really interested in that area. There's this idea that's impacting the brain, it's making us overweight. Again, not particularly evidence-based. There is an observation around that, but uh, fraught with issues. And in the controlled trials that we have, these diet drinks 
are seemingly helpful with uh, as part of a calorie controlled fat loss program and the caffeine may even help with appetite control I, I sort of think that that's enough on that I wanted to I want to keep it short I want this just just a general discussion about something fairly specific. I will do some stuff on artificial sweeteners so people can delve into the different areas of is it causing cancer? Is it causing um, diabetes? Isn't it, is it causing insulin responses that's going to cause X, Y, Z? Is it going to make me gain weight? Is it impacting my gut health? Whatever. A again, it's just remembering that caffeine is a gut stimulant. So, oh, I need the toilet. It's, you know, the same as you have a coffee. I'm running to the bathroom. It's it's not impacting your gut health. It's just one of the normal impacts and it's not specifically bad because of, you know, this can or whatever. It's caffeine. Cool. I hope that's helpful. I hope it's short enough and simple enough and enjoyable enough that you can just share it around. Next time someone has a go, you go look at, listen to this. It's, I don't have no idea how long this will have been. Le definitely less than 20 minutes. I'm almost certain. Uh, but yes, hope it's helpful and I'll do those longer, more in depth. And, and as, I, as I've said before, martinmcdonald.com forward slash EP for episode, whatever episode this is, I reckon it's about 43-ish, maybe 44, I don't know, maybe 45. And uh, you'll get the show notes, but you'll also get the links to all the studies and the stuff that I mentioned if you want to go there. Uh, but cool, until next time, much love.